is it going ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode now i know that here on the sneaky zig channel we are generally making car content and or dirt bike really anything with a motor and we're going to stretch that anything with a motor concept here today because everybody's got to have hobbies right everybody has a little something they do on the weekend or when you got some free time so last year i purchased a new new to me bass boat and here she is she's a 17 foot bass tracker from 1987 and i'll be the first to tell you she's in real good shape for her age everything still works it's in uh pristine shape and i tell you what i did not catch many fish last year because i suck at fishing but i sure tried now me being the motorhead that i am i couldn't live with a 20 or 30 horse John boat so I went ahead and got a 70 horse two-stroke mercury with my bass boat purchase and it was a great motor it still is it still runs fantabulous but there's one slight problem to it and that problem is it's uh it's only 70 horsepower which is enough for most people on a flat bottom aluminum boat but not I no sir not I so we've gone ahead and made a terrible decision and purchased another mercury a little bit newer as you can see by the clean look of her but this dude in the 70 it's not an 80 it's not even a 90 or a 100 no this puppy is a 125 a straight ripper as some would say and yeah it might still be february and it might still be a little bit cold outside but better weather is just around the corner i can feel it in fact today it is 50 degrees outside so i'm kind of kicking myself that this isn't ready yet so in today's riveting production we're going to throw this 125 onto the bass boat and then uh, we're gonna take her for a test drive and see what kind of speeds she can achieve safely of course since safety is always number one priority or at least it's in the top five now unfortunately since i purchased this motor in the winter i didn't have the foresight to get a couple speed comparison videos of the 70 but i can tell you that she would top out around mid to high 30s maybe 35 36 so if i can dig through the archives and find some clips of that dude running i'll do that now to give you a feel for it All right, ladies and gents, first step in our conversion to this absolute ripper is to remove the existing 70 horse motor. So let's get on it. And as you can see, the old weak sauce motor is off and sitting over here on a pallet. So we're moving right along, but I am losing daylight. So I believe I will prep all this junk up and switch her over uh, when I get a little bit more light. It's a little dark out here. And we are back for another day chock full of activity. If you couldn't tell from the previous time lapse, I got a little impatient and went ahead and just threw the dude in. It was a little rough because I did not have the hydraulics hooked up yet. So I had to just yank her into place there to line up the 
motor to transom bolts, but that is okay. We got it done. And then besides that, there's just a couple of things that needed hooked up. You can see I taped all the wires with what they were. There's your starter ground, starter solenoid positive. On this side, you got the gear shifter and throttle cable that you got to hook up. It's a little tough, it was down in there. Then the old quick disconnect fuel thingy. Not super thrilled with how that turned out. May go ahead and redo that at some point. Really doesn't need to be quick disconnect going to the motor. The quick disconnect on the tank, a little bit more important there. Because if you got to change a battery, as you can see, they're back in there. A lot easier if you can take the tank out pretty quick. Got new batteries, of course, because boat batteries only last about a year, which is quite unfortunate for me and my wallet. And then there's some other little stuff like steering, stuff like that to hook up, but that was easy peasy. So she is ready to test run. I assume I start it just like the 70. Give her a couple pumps on the old primer bulb. Press the key for chokage, and then you lift that guy up to give her a little throttle right off the bat. So let me get the water turned on and we'll do a little function check. Alrighty, ladies and gents, water is running everywhere. Let's twist the key, see what happens. the old best massiest bodius it is it is the middle of march so it's a little bit chilly and that motor is just a wee bit louder than my last motor you can see i got the sick flops and socks on as all uh fishermen should and we've trolled out here to the uh middle of the lake so i guess we might as well drive around a little bit see what happens all righty let's give her give her just a wee bit of beans we're warmed up we're sitting about 130 right now so let's uh let's uh, let's see if she works let's see if that motor comes flying off the back of this thing
say that it that it works pretty good. All right, well, I guess I'm gonna see if I can catch a fish real quick and uh, put her away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes your regularly scheduled programming here on the Sneaky Zeke channel. And I just wanna say thank you if you've made it this far in the video. It is much appreciated that you've watched it all the way through, and I just have a couple messages here before you leave. So earlier in the video I mentioned I was curious as to how much speed I would gain from nearly doubling the horsepower of the motor on the boat. But, to be frank, the horsepower of the motor attached to the back of your boat is uh, beneficial, but isn't really directly connected to how fast your boat will go. Of course, that is the pitch of the prop that you have on the motor, and of course the horsepower will determine if you've got enough beans to drive a higher pitched prop or not. So for example, this motor does have a higher pitched prop. I think it's a 22 and I came from a 17 on the old motor. If you don't know what that is, don't really worry about it too much. It's just a measurement of how many inches of water your prop should pass through in one rotation. So of course the 17 is 17 inches, the 22 would be 22 inches. So all you really need to know is the higher that number, the higher top speed you should have in theory if your motor has enough beans, like I said earlier, to get you to that speed. Now it didn't really show very well in the video there, but I was able to get into the mid to high 30s with relative ease. And of course it doesn't look very choppy, but with a flat bottom aluminum boat, they are not very capable of going through chop very good so even just the slightest amount of chop means that i won't be able to hit top speed so that's excuse number one excuse number two is that somehow in the conversion my tachometer stopped reading so i'm going to have to look into that but i couldn't tell what rpms the motor was at i was just going purely off sound there and i didn't really want to push it into the heavens of rpm -ness without knowing exactly where it was at. For example, I didn't want to go past 5,000, 6,000 RPM just to get a high speed number when you don't actually know maybe it's going 7,500 and you might blow it up. So again, didn't really want to push it without knowing the RPMs. That's excuse number two. Now, like I was talking about, it got up to speed with ease, so that's really cool. The biggest thing it changed most definitely was acceleration, which is going to be quite handy when I have a little bit more weight and maybe another fisherman in the boat with me. So all in all, it was a good conversion. And it'll definitely make the boat more enjoyable to take out. So if you have any other questions or things you want to know about the boat or the process, feel free to leave it down in the comments and I'll either answer you there or maybe I'll make another video on something else. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and we'll probably be back to some car and bike-related stuff here soon with the weather getting warmer. So thanks again. I will see you in the next one.